ESL One Cologne is brought to you in part by Intel, Vodafone, MSI, DHL, Alienware, Betway, Logitech G, and Pay Safeguard. Didn't quite work out for them like that Frag movie did for Big. It was their map choice. Cash was going to be the where we first started this adventure of the upper bracket, a spot in the Lanxess for either of the teams to pick up two of the three. And now I'm joined once again by YNK and Thorin, our delightful analysts, the brains behind my attempt at Brawn. Gentlemen, first map, Cash, this is Big's pick. This is where I would imagine you'd frame it, Duncan, that you win this if you want to win the series, if you're big. You're coming in as underdogs. You know what Exists said, I believe, was it at a Cologne event where he said, like, I think it might have been Kat says, don't ever pick Cash against me. And that was the Oh my call. God, he was might so sassy. Yeah, actually, yeah, 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 I remember so, this. It turns out that was not the right move for Big. I think they misplayed this map a lot, though. Like, first of all, you just look at the all matchup. Smoothie didn't have a particularly good game. JW was going on fire. Again, as I said, even though it's not a map that traditionally you think of with Fnatic, they had the post plant situations. Crims came through as Crims does what Crims does, wins clutch rounds, really solid player. So all the pieces were there. The firepower just wasn't there for big for me. And the T side was a bit lacking, I thought, as well. So I don't really think they've hit any of the win conditions. I, I think Smur had a good game, but only in the first half. That that was the problem. In the second half, he fell off. He only had the op towards the end of the game. And big for them, losing both pistols. And early on, you know, 5-0 down in the first half, 4-0 in the second one. Simple math, 9-0 accumulated, you know, start. That's some, very difficult for them. Even if they focus mostly on gun rounds, that's still too much against a team like Fnatic. And that round from Crims when Fnatic was on an eco or, you know, upgraded pistols, that completely destroyed them. And that's just a case of them not covering each other properly, right? I mean, two players inside of A main, but what about Squeak? If, if the third guy is covering it for you, if not, someone needs to watch out for it because they died, you know, very cheaply by Krim just running out, getting two kills with a CZ. And, and after that, you know, he gets two more and that turned it around completely for Fnatic. It looked like they had no solution for uh, Bigs, uh, Bigs more than anything else, passive CT side. Uh, and that gifted them around and they rolled over them after that. Perhaps a less discussed by element of the Fnatic roster change, Duncan, was the, the fact that JW dedicated to the rifle and his stats yeah. actually yeah. are boasting right now. Yes. He had nine multi-kill rounds, excuse me, yeah, nine multi-kill rounds. He had five opening jewels to zero. Every time oh. he got that first blood, it was never himself. Yeah. And outside of that, 115 ADR. The, the, the dude had a fantastic game and it's a way with that pressure of, could you right, yes. warp this round? Especially because obviously he does still op when he's when he's mm. feeling out or they're in a lead and they get they're picking up an extra op, but he doesn't force it, and that's the key thing. And the reason why this is interesting is because actually JW in his career, unless you go way, way back to like 2013, oh. was never really using the rifles. Like he was actually one of those opers who actually wasn't that great with rifles. That's why famously when they sort of like banned him from using the op in Fnatic, he he did really did start maining shotguns and semi op max, like weird weapon choices like that, and just playing off angles, you know, because he's never traditionally been known as that good a rifle. So yeah, he has somehow Whatever this, this role or whatever they've done in the team seems to have revitalized them in a way we've never seen before. Yeah, and we'll continue this conversation, but on the topic of Warpers, now would be a nice opportunity for us to go ahead and take a look at what Smooya's been saying. He's the newest addition to Big with that UK flag flying by his name, one of the few representatives from that nation. And now at a one to zero deficit, we can see exactly what he was saying to our camera crew. I think the only way to make it as a UK player is you have to leave the UK scene. That's very evident. All the skillful people don't want to play together because we're a bunch of babies and he doesn't like him and he doesn't want to play with him, so we'll never really have a good team. When I came up, I just like was a huge idiot and it slowed my, like, my progress down a lot. So if you're just a nice guy, don't flame anybody and you just focus on CS, then you'll make it. Being self-motivated and coming from the UK scene is, it can be tough, but it's self-dependent, right? Like, you have some of the best players in the world who randomly drop motivation. Crims still is one of the best players in the world, but he does 
period where he had like eight hours of CS consistently in the past two weeks. Like that's kind of crazy. But for me, I've never really had that problem. I guess it's just dependent on the person. I don't think it really matters in the scene. The only reason I'm on big right now is because of Legia. I'm pretty sure he just saw my stats on HLTV and like watched a couple of my demos and was like, in his own words, he said, this guy is insane and we need him. And that's all he said to me for like a week. And I was like, I um, guess I'm not joining big anymore. And then he ran a message back like, yo dude, like I've sorted it all out, you'll be joining big. And I was like, just the happiest kid on the planet. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, mom, I'm joining big. And then it all went through. When I first joined, I was super nervous when playing with them as well, which was really bad because I still looked up to them, you know? The first CS match that I ever watched professionally was Mouse Bots on Dust 2. Whenever I'm playing with them, I just get a memory of me being like a silver five, like, oh my God, it's God B, I don't want to like mess up or anything. And then when I messed up, he'd be like, sweet man, don't do the thing, you know? And I'd be like, oh my God, what's happening now? And then I get super nervous, but now he's like more relaxed and calm with me the way he speaks to me. And if I make a mistake, he'll tell me, I fix it and it doesn't happen again. And right now we're just like getting a lot better, like constantly because the way he approaches problems instead of before. We just try to run a strict default where everyone does what they want, goes for their own kills and we just like maul everybody. And Gob's like super happy. So when we start adding the strats on top, I feel like we'll become like a really like deadly team. Right now, there's not a single bit of like nervousness in me when normally I would get like super pumped or excited or nervous as well. I'd be like, oh my God, dude, I'm gonna do bad. With the preparation we've done and the teams we've been practicing and how I've been playing, I'm completely like ready to play. The only thing that really distracts me is more personal stuff. And coming into this event, I've tried really hard to block it out and stop going on my phone as much and just stay away from like all my personal stuff and explain to everyone like I'm I'm here to work, you know? I feel like I'll also apply like towards Cologne, so I'll be completely fine. When I stream, people are always asking, hey bro, like I can't wait to meet you in Cologne and stuff. So it's like really cool having that aspect of like people actually wanting to meet me and stuff just because I'm like playing with other German guys, you know? And the team are like very focused on doing well in Cologne. That's our main focus. Every time I practice them, like guys, play how we would in uh, Cologne, knuckling down really hard on like how we want to play in Cologne. So I know it's definitely like a big thing to those guys. If we make top eight, it'd just be amazing to play on the stage as well with all the support. Learning a lot there from Smoojura, not only himself, but also the team and team environment. And of course, aiming for that top six finish, which would get him to the playoffs and in front of that crowd. It is a rather cutthroat format we are witnessing here. Um, but still, joining you, of course, is still Duncan and none other than Yanko. And let's start focusing on map two because it's Fnatic's pick. They say they put it all on the line. They do have a backup chance, of course, that lower bracket does exist. They're still in the uppers at this point in time, Yanko. But does it happen here? And are you going to be able to topple a team like Fnatic playing the way they do? It's going to be difficult, especially considering what Smoya said in the interview, that they are, you know, free-flowing and, you know, pugging around and beating everyone. And then when they add the strats, it's going to be even so much better. And you're not going to beat Fnatic at their own game, right? And it was a weird pick from Fnatic for me, picking Train, right? Even with the old lineup, they only played it two times. Yes, they, they won it both times, I think once against NIP, second time, I, I can't remember really, maybe Liquid at ECS. And, you know, it's, it's not a map that they're very much practiced on or anything along those lines. So it's also not a map where you can go for a lot of fights. We, we saw that they struggled on their T side when rounds got prolonged and, you know, they couldn't find any opening kills. They didn't have a lot of utility left and what they did, they didn't use it properly. So that's going to be an even bigger problem for them on a map like Train, especially if they don't get that bump by winning pistol rounds. Yeah, which is, of course, a big step in the right direction. Uh, I heard in the interview as well, Duncan, he said, oh, we just play really strict defaults where everyone does what they want. And I'm like, well, that is a bit of a strange uh, one. Let's, let's, yeah. walk, let's kind of process those words you've used there. Yeah, and obviously that is very different from what you think of with a God B team, because he is really supposed to be the puppet master style in-game leader. In fact, that's part of the reason why they used to justify having people like Ligui and the team, some of the less high quality level players, because they said they know exactly what their job is. Like we've got it all down in practice. They know what time it is and what to do <laughs> when that alarm goes off in their heads. 153, that's what we're gonna do. Just like I did with that, because I told them to set you alarm that's when you'll come in and that's and that is perfect it worked out just as we were looking to work out how this is going to go down i just the reason i'm staring at my screen is because i wanted to look at big train stats and there is 
really nothing to get excited about here. We've got about 50% win rate on LAN. And uh, of course, recently adding, adding Smoother, that's probably with a pinch of salt as well. Um, with our last couple of seconds. Got it, Smoother there inadvertently there. No. That was actually just a, a, a turn of phrase, I know, but it sounded like you were like adding Smoother, so a pinch of salt there. <laughs> a bit more than a pinch, but. Yeah. <laughs> a bucket of it. No, we're <laughs> heading into train, and it looks like we'll be leaving it here from the desk. Yes, the days for big in the upper bracket may be numbered. It's Fnatic's opportunity to throw the knockout blow. Let's find out with your casters. Pansy, Moses, take it away. Thank you very much, guys. And yeah, indeed, this is this is going to be a, a tough matchup, I can imagine, for Big. The record, as highlighted on the desk, does not sit hugely in their hands here, but maybe they can wake up here. Maybe they've had a chat in the small break and try to adjust something because, simply put, it wasn't enough. Fnatic were bringing out a great game on cash. They really were. A lot of individuals came to play, and that'll be what Big has to kind of quell is that kind of effort. Draken goes down, Tapson still covering Ivy, but they're making a lot of progress. They've actually moved away from it, though, and the spit around from Tapson is so nice. They're handling this pissed around very well. One kill from Crims, one from Flusha. Still an element of danger. They cannot bleed bodies away now. And Fnatic is going to be able to grab the bomb. Crims is going to back away from it, and they can readjust now. Kind of liking this Deagle P250 weirdness, but uh, it kind of works. It gives you a bit of range to play against those USPSs and a whole lot of kick to it, but three still standing in their way, so it's not an easy task here, but eyes on the bomb as well. That's in Crimson's hand, and he's down by Ivy, so that's going to be a factor, but they need a little bit of work coming in from Flusher to try and create that avenue of approach, and that's what he's attempting to do, try and make these players move, give their you know, a bit of a shot here, find the information, and that's great from him. Taking down Tizian does allow that move forward to come in from the player with the bomb being Crim. So this now becomes very possible with Flusher doing this sort of damage. Just got B left and Flusher on the run. Gets the job done and it's perfect from Fnatic. Oh, we've, we've added Flusher to the mix now. It's Crims and JW in the first one and now Flush is here. That is a beautiful recovery in the pistol round. Nice shots with the Deagle and just big, just losing track of where Flusher could possibly be. He worked his way around that train yard. That's what makes that outer bomb site so difficult. So many different ways you can change your position and be very deadly. And despite a great start from guys like Tabson, guys like Nex, this is just shut down after that. So nice from Flusher. The one D grant at the end to close it out as well is beautiful. Oh. Right on Gobby as he tries to find some cover. Ooh, that doesn't feel good, does it, to be on the end of that? It does if you're, oh yeah, if you're on the end of it. <laughs> I was gonna say, it feels great if you're Flusher or a Fnatic fan. Tabson's not getting away. He's stuck along the wall and stuck in the fire. 1-0, what a turnaround. And this is a heavy investment from Big. Double Scout, pistol and armor on the other players. They're fully bought out. Smoothie trying to hold down Ivy. God beat. Not far off and next as well, but it looks like they might be testing the waters by B. Tizian, playing by the upper side of things, but takes so much damage. Trying to fake that he drops, swings back in on it. Actually almost catches Flusher, but then that happens. Fair play. Didn't want to give the kill over. <laughs> Just end it. <laughs> Towards B we go. Bomb in hand. It looks like this is all there. Smoother and Next are there, but the smokes are up. It's very tricky for them. Next might get a bit of an angle, depending on how thick that smoke might be, but bomb planted. It ain't happening. Look at your boy JW flanking. This is going to be beautiful. We'll take some weapons away right at the end. Here's the footsteps from Next. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yes, he wants to shame him, but it's gone away. The opportunity is not quite gone yet. He's, oh. He really wants this. Yeah, the turn. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Even sprays. The, I love this JW. Whatever JW is, is brought to the table today, I'm, I'm feeling it in a big way. Kind of makes you grin, doesn't it, when you see this sort of uh, BM coming out. Can he do some more? This would be the one. Oh, Smoothia! <laughs> does it right back to him, but it is round Fnatic. Doesn't matter if you're going to try and get it done now. This is uh, all but over. Obviously, they do not want to lose out on those rifles either. Oh, what is this? What is this? It's a nice shoot from Smoothie. A couple kills right at the end, double kill, and obviously the AKs don't want to challenge. Keep those weapons up. You lost the UMP, you lost the scout. Not the biggest thing in the world. I really wanted that knife from JW. I really, I didn't know how much I wanted it until he pulled out the knife, and then I was all in. Thank you for clarifying yes. the knife. <laughs> Smoothie with the scout and armor still into this next round. Draken with the MAC-10, trying to recoup some of those losses, wants to get the AWP out, get some bonus money. Likely we'll see him lead the way, be the aggressor in a certain scenario. It's going to be a heavy push towards inside. MAC-10 is not in this location, it's Flusha. But big backs away. 
Yeah, falling off this. I think Smuya going to be on the receiving end of what JW's bringing as well. Will the knife come out again, or is this uh, a little kinder from JW? Oh, it's just, it's just so good right now. He spots out two players, takes down next. Is he on a swivel? Can he get more? Yep. Turns around. It's uh, a little too easy for JW right now. He's feeling out the game well. Three kills for him in this one. Fnatic with the clean start. Three rounds on the board. And this is the scary part of Fnatic is obviously you can see just how, how bold JW is just walking down Ivy, walking all the way out. Just like, you know, the confidence to make that kind of a play. And this is, this was always the recipe of how you have to shut down Fnatic back when they've been in their peak at different times is you have to, you have to force them against making those kinds of plays, those kind of crazy plays you're not expecting. Yes, that round, it's a, it's a gamble from Big. It's a, they only have USPs. They don't have a whole lot into it. But if those come out in the gun rounds, they can be equally as deadly. And this is a round where Fnatic is going to, yeah, they're going to pick up the speed. They want to take advantage of the lack of utility. But the AWP from Smuya is at least going to slow things down initially. And Exist needs this kill. He's going to get it. And, and he almost got the follow-up too. Tabson's HP took a bit of a dive. Crimson's position almost catching out next. But Tabson just wanders into the fire. Not exactly how you want to be going down. And the two remaining players, you've got Flusher and JW. Now, JW's been finding so much room. Smuya seemed like he might have been keeping tabs on that, but gets caught in the back. Bit of fire down towards main as well as Flush has been taken very low now. As what's the call on that? Tag came through, no one keeping Nex aware of this, and we're down to a 2v2. This becomes incredibly possible, but Smooth is doing everything he can to try and deny this one on the board. Yeah, but it's your boy Flusher up next. You have a lot of boys in this game, apparently. I've, I've been using that. It's been my go-to. <laughs> 7 HP, Smooth with the op at the angle, and Flush is going to slow play it. It's the pause button. I think more than anything, they knew JW was wrapping around the train. I don't think they expected him to get aggressive on top of it and actually peek in. He was expecting him to wrap around in a, a deeper angle. But Flusher is waiting for the mistake that's not coming. Oh. He might have the timing, depending on Smuya's vision. Now into the corner, there's the good find. But Tizian isn't too far off. Fakes it out. So Tizian's going to be gifted the chance knowing that that was a fake. 20 seconds now. And Flusher has very little idea as to where Tizian is. So this could be very tough for him. 15 seconds. I don't think he can make this play. Uh, I think he might be... See. Oh, my God. Eight. That's Tizian Reddit, though. He's already going to be here, and he stops him. Good he read. might have been able to get in and actually get that plan. That is right on the edge. Yep. Felt like it could have happened there. Um, and even with this being a round win for big, the money is very punishing for them in this situation now. And, and even, uh, almost even more important, I don't think Flusha had this in mind necessarily, but because he went to the inner bomb site and Tizian rotated back to find that kill, he didn't have time to run back to the outer yard to get the AWP on Smuya, which was all the way towards Ivy. So, fair play to Flusha. I might not have been able to do it either way if you won that clutch inside the eight bomb site. But either way, first round for Big, still not out of the woods. They have a scout, they have an M they have two SMGs, they have a Famas. Draken's got an AWP of his own, but he's down to 12 HP. He's actually lost the exchange. And JW being very fast-paced and taking control, or at least getting position, and, and Tapson has no idea. It won't matter as he's playing it passively, not going to aggress. Just waiting to see what comes up. Gob goes for a bit of a walk, but doesn't find too much information more than anything. It's just clear for now. But Fnatic are playing a little slower on this, taking their time. They have a lot of utility to burn through, so why not? Try and uh, find the best opportunity they can. Smooya going to be swinging his way over towards B. Supporting Tizian just a touch, but it could be Fnatic heading wherever they want, really. Being pretty patient with this. And obviously, Draken down at 12 HP means he's he's kind of forced into a passive. He can't go for those picks outside. He's not, like, sticking around in main and trying to peer on top of the trains or anything like that. Pretty aggressive defensive stance. Got B behind the first train. Next over at the E box. And Tabson just can kind of be on a swivel. He's got to keep his eyes on Ivy. But if there's a lot of pressure coming from main, he can turn around to help out. Flashbang there, JW's already out. Oh, that is a great reaction. I don't know how he recovered an immediate headshot. Frustrating for Tabson, but the defense outside still holding strong. And now they have two fronts to fight at, but Gompi hasn't clicked in yet. He hasn't made that crossfire work, and now he's got to push forward. He does find Draken at the low HP, cleans that off, and one more adds on top. But JW, how has he gotten himself in these positions so frequently? He's being patient with it. There's the turn, there's the kill. He knows Smooey is in the smoke. Low HP, and Big's gonna back off, let the plant go down. Tizian does have a rifle and a nade. 
No kits, though, to be seen. This is where things get a little bit tougher for them, and this angle's being watched by Crims. Full HP, too. It's gonna be tough for him to work through. Does take down smoothly. The trade doesn't come in. No! Tizian falls and Krim so strong in that position and just simply outdoes them. I don't think Smoogie expected that peak from Krims whatsoever. He had the angle. I think he was just leaving it. That is a brilliant reaction on the entry from JW. And then once again, just slithers his way into that position. He is, they have lost track of JW multiple times in this half already in that outer train yard. Or not even just JW. Remember Flush on the pistol round as well. They lost track of him and they just can't seem to get the good read. Might be one of the reasons why we've seen them have some struggles on train. Might be just uh, something with, you know, Smuya coming in, some miscommunications. They haven't quite figured out how they will exactly want to play and react on this map. But Fnatic is really exploiting it at the moment. To say the very least, this is um, scary if JW gets that much room to work and finds that many loopholes to get through. It's not just been one round, it's, as you highlighted, multiple. That keeps going on. Big really need to shut that down. Don't want to make it any easier for JW than it may already be. He's having one of those games where it's a terrifying player to be against. And again, finds way you know, a little bit of room here. Not too surprising. It is against pistols. And all said and done, Gobby does get away with somehow getting behind him. But JW's on the way back around. <laughs> God damn, someone stop him, please. He's been such a little menace here. I'm such a big fan of it. He's even spraying with a Glock before he even gets out of the smoke. He just wants Gobby to know it's coming. Five to one, and big again in terms of their money. They might want to save this. We saw them on the defense on cash had a huge reliance on the ops, right? So you have to imagine on, on this map as well, they're going to want to get the AWPs out, especially on someone like Smoothie to have that long range. They really haven't had a whole lot of great buys considering their first gun round, they, they were taken down to just one player in a law, or in a win, and then reset immediately. So this half not going the way they'd like, and Gobby still just sat and spawned. He might be doing the old, the old French timeout. A little bit of extra time to just sit there and talk and chat and, and make sure everyone's going to be on the same page and a, almost a throwaway round on the CT side. Lasha, spawning up two. Meantime, Exist did find Smooya. This is all going towards A, going very well. Gobby's in the middle of the smoke, but he only has a USPS. Oh, <laughs> yes. Christ, JW! <laughs> he is just... This, this is like the epitome of JW, this game, so far. So dirty, is he? <laughs> oh... He found it. Redemption. There's <laughs> three kills in this round as well. Oh, he's just... The best thing is that I'm pretty sure JW's been pretty vocal about Smoothie in the past as well. So this one's got to be a little bit of a has stinger. He, has he had some... Uh, There's been had some a, choice a, words. A riff or a row? What were you, whatever JW's, you want to Guys, this is... It's, it's before the watershed. <laughs> All right? Can't. Mm -mm. <laughs> nice little tea bag. Classy tea bag. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is this is lovely, isn't it? That's some retro banter. This is what you were after. This is what you wanted. I'm a big fan of this. All of it. Jason Moses O'Toole loves a tea bag. Six to one now, and we'll see if they can uh, can can get into this at all. They're, they're losing. This is slipping away from them, out of their fingers. They haven't even really been able to contest for a whole lot of rounds recently. That's a good start. Taps in with the op. Now that they've got it out, Smuya has one as well. So back to that double op, and there's the trade. JW doesn't care whatsoever. Swings out wide. They've got next beneath the ladder. Gobby has pushed forward, so aggression from the defense. But Ivy is the next point of contention, and Smuya has rotated around with the op to handle that. He's got two. And that should safely and firmly put this round in the favor of Big. The, the thing they have to avoid here is taking losses. You need a solid win. You need four players surviving. There we go. They, they will achieve that much. And um, for Big, they, they have to tame Fnatic. You have to somehow make JW play not what he's been doing. You don't want that vintage JW flying around the map, battering you. But it's hard to do that if he's just been able to get away with it. Now, good work from Tabs. And JW did chime back in with this one. But... Um, how are you gonna stop that? I, this this is a scary, scary man. That's the thing. I think he's had so much success in the early stages of this that he's he's gonna keep going back to it. I mean, he's obviously feeling it now as well. He's taken the op over over Drac and might have been a spawn. He is going towards that inner bomb site, but obviously he's just saying, "No, I've got a hot hand. Give me the AWP. I'll see what I can find." And he's got to be careful. Smoothie is pushing up for the flick over. He didn't know which one he wanted to fight for in JW. 
look at the gamble he's taking. He's got the angle on lower ramp, and he's just going to hold this, and he's going to wait, and this is going to allow his teammates to safely stream in, and they can take their time coming towards that inner bomb site. Rotating back around his taps in. Flash from Smuya, that might help him. Tizian's got the opening kill on a drac, and Molotov into the bomb site, but it's been lost. This is on a knife's edge. Fnatic have so much room here. The Molotov does burn a little. GW did find Gobby in the back lines, though, so support is limited right now. Tabson needed that. He doesn't get it. Now, this puts Smoothie in a really tricky spot, quite isolated. Falling back even might be tricky. He's still trying to fight for this one. GW still being there, being such a nuisance. High flash to follow. Bit of an orb battle here, even though it's not quite to the line yet. Flash finds Tizzy, and it's all going... Wait, GW... JW, oh my god, JW, what is this? You love to see it, but also you kind of hate to see it a little bit. I don't know, it's 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 brutal, but it's all but done here. Fnatic have the round on the board, but it's just nasty as hell. He needs some Jesus in his life. What is he doing <laughs> to these people? Oh. There's no God here, Lauren. <laughs> JW is <laughs> just the God. The thus only far. God is JW. <laughs> You're in his world now. Two knives in the round. <laughs> that is nice from JW. And I mean, that's, it's not just even about the kills he gets in. Then obviously this is just kind of fun. This is just a, a nice little exchange from him. Hiding in the smoke, he knows where the bomb is planted. But I mean, it's just the play he makes when he when he knows the AWP has pushed up Smuya. He takes, he takes the gamble, takes the risk, and gets down that lower ramp and just holds that angle the whole time. And it's so tough to rotate a second player over. And if you can't get that person, you can't deny them access. Gobby was spotted by Crims, who's not going to get too many freer kills than that. He has traded off a good find from Nex for the Equalizer. And JW gonna push right through the flames and he's gonna win that battle. And now he jumps, he spots Smuya on top of the train. It's the AWP. Smuya cannot find the angle. And JW's looking for it, tries to tap away. Good win from Smuya. Keeps the advantage in their favor, but Tizian pushing up as well. He falls on the extremity, and now Smuya and Nex have a decision to make. They're both at the A bomb site. They're going to split. Smuya is going to come back in or to keep his eyes on it, but there's a minute and ten that Fnatic can just work them across this map. You can see the big have very little safety in this, though. Smuya carefully working his way around, but. Fnatic are trying to find what they can here. What's the best way to try and play this out? Flush up. Smoke plays in. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is that is a pretty smoke. I don't. It's that, keep it. <laughs> it's kept smoother. There. It's gonna yeah. It's gonna freeze them a little bit. They have to be. And I mean the tough part is as a player you're obviously gonna know that where that smoke can be thrown from the other side of the map as well. So they're gonna be honest of that. But more than anything, it just kind of allows Fnatic some kind of confidence to say the only place they can really be is the middle of the map, which is Connector. And now they know. They've spotted it out. Flames are going to stop them from going anywhere. And so is a bullet to the face. Flush it takes out Nex. And it's just Smuya, the best of Britain in a one-on-two. Against the Swedes. Why does this feel like a foreshadowing? Why does this feel... Listen, Lauren, if he doesn't win this, then no, obviously just back Sweden's going to beat him in the World Cup. Just leave, Smuya. Just, just back away. You're okay. It's all right. You know, they do that for, like, um, the Super Bowl. They play, like, a game of, like, NFL Madden between the two teams in the Super Bowl. As like a, that's like a... As, like, a, you know, little, like, let's see if we can decide it here in Madden. This, that's what's happening here right now. Great. We've got JW on 18 to 6. <laughs> Great. Feels good. I mean, it's not a British team, right? So no. it could be okay. But there's that, that flag's looking... <laughs> hmm. And this is looking like another round for Fnatic, of course. 8 to 2 now. Big starting to uh, crumble under pressure slightly. The timeout is being called... Oh, good luck finding an answer to this, because there isn't many to come up with here. No, there's not, because I mean, it just comes down to like how you have to stop JW, and, and at the moment it feels like he can just do no wrong with the plays that he's making, because he's not even doing anything necessarily that special. He's just kind of, I mean, he's just taking fights and winning them out towards Ivy. And if you, that's that's one of the things like that Ivy is such a pressure point for that outer bomb site. If you can't control it, if you can't contain the attack at that portion of the map, then it just opens up that third front at such like a, it, it just gives you a set, like a second angle you have to worry about outside. It's one thing if you can focus on ladder room and, and T mid, but once you also have to like swivel and turn around and watch your back as well, that's when things get crazy. And that's kind of the strength of this Fnatic T side is that JW's had his way in Ivy 
every single round. Draken's one and seven. The Alper of, of Fnatic is, has one kill, and they are just steamrolling over this defense. That's not even a knock on Draken. He obviously just doesn't need to do anything. It's, it's been very one-sided. Again, coming out of the pause, I wonder if Fnatic just switched something up here, try and do something a little bit different. Bit of a look towards Beast. Mooya misses the shot. Tizian lands his, but now they know where the AWP is, and it looks like they want to go hunting just a touch. Crims has a go. Next says no, but it is still going to be a 2v3. JW's found his way towards A, so that's a scary thing in the back of your mind that the Beast has been unleashed. And he's I, on the prowl. Feels like Flush is misplaying this, though. Flush has got to be careful. He has the bomb, and yeah, he's going to get a kill, so it kind of doesn't really matter necessarily anymore. Now they've spotted out Smoothie as well. He's going to fall back towards that B bomb site, and I think you're going to see Fnatic kind of slow play this as they want to start at least sending JW on the hunt. Go take that AWP away, get one player searching for it, have two players secure the bomb site and the plant and the round. But take away this weapon, and it's immediate. Oh no, JW, stay away from the body. That. Stay away from the body. <laughs> Leave it be. It's just yeah. barbarians, aren't they? 92 uh, Fnatic bounding ahead now. I'm just scared of what they're going to do in this round. It, it's going their way. That was, that was a shoddy buy from Big. They couldn't get much out of it, but see if they can muster something together in this. They don't have the AWP. Smooya does only have that rifle beside him and not much utility. And it looks like a quickening of pace from Fnatic. Why not? And uh, let's see if this works out for them. This time, though, the utility that they did have seems to be slowing them down a bit. But Flush's nade does find its place. But Next still in a good position up by Ebox can try and cut some of this attack in half. But success still coming in for Fnatic means that there's still pressure aplenty. 3v3 now with Fnatic having players like Flusher in this sort of spot means they can just hit the brakes and do that. <laughs> I, I felt like Next did enough. He got the initial two kills they needed for that defense. They couldn't slow down the push. They stopped it towards Evox. They couldn't slow down JW coming beneath the trains and they, on the other side of it, or between the trains, and that's just too much. This firepower, Flusha finds a creative position as well. And Fnatic just rolling with this, just calling the outside rush, knowing they cannot be stopped. Tizian in a one on three. Crims has spotted him out, and that should almost be the signal to just back away slowly. You need rounds, but you also need the weapons to fight with them moving forward. It's going to be a temp for Fnatic no matter what happens here. He doesn't have a kit. Theoretically, they could pick one up off the ground, but I think the time's just gone away. I don't even know if they necessarily had one on the ground, and that's going to be it. He gets two kills on the exit, but Fnatic have already gotten more than enough for this offensive half of train. The way they've been doing it, this doesn't play well into the fact that maybe Big could turn this around later on. This plays to the fact that Fnatic, if anything, have gone stronger since Cash. It looked good on Cash. They were quite aggressive. You saw assertive plays coming out. It was a bit back and forth at times. The double orps posed a bit of a, a conundrum to them for a short amount of time. But here, it feels like they have everything. It feels like they've gotten stronger since the break in the money. is just shambolic now for Big. And it's been that way for quite some time, and even when they've, they've had the money, they haven't really, it hasn't changed their fortunes. I, poor Nex, I, th he, I think he did such a good job over at Ebox to stop that, even peering in and slowing things down on the other side of the bomb site, and just still can't get anything going. A half buy, some good utility damage. There's the AK on Tizian, it's CZ's, and a, a Deagle on Smuya. They have some armor as well, and actually they've dinked up Crims, so that's not bad. And some aggression towards the inner bomb site is going to let him know that no one is close to attacking B. Tizzy in there all alone with the pistols outside. Here's JW, and he's going to find that one. Below half HP. We know that's not going to temper him. Nope. Smooth, yeah. Eyes on it. JW on the other side. Still lingering around the bombs, heading away from them. So keeping him over there. But there's been aggression since then. Big have pushed players up, so next could be a factor. But only has a CZ. Tricky. Just look, this position they've put JW in, he can just continue forward and wrap around that B bomb site and help him take it. I mean, this has got to be so confusing for Big. They they know he's probably out, but they didn't actually spot him. So, I mean, just so many questions. Exist knows there's one pushed in towards T main. And JW now has got that position. He's going to be towards CT spawn, but it's all on Tizian. X has done what he can. This is down to Tizian to make it count. Whether they check on it or not, it doesn't really matter. Tizian has to land the shots. One, two, he needs the third. Can't get it. Draken is there. He might have done enough to hinder this, slow it down, but this is when JW's position becomes so uncomfortable. It looks like they're not going to be quick on this either. They're still so mindful of where he was before, where he was spotted last, and got to be on the long way around here. Might be hearing these steps, JW. Not sure if he's close enough, but next will be the one to find the beast himself. JW waits. And now they hold the line. JW 
Going to be falling away, being more of a nuisance, buying time, making them clear this out, goes back again. Gobby gets him, though. But I don't see a kit here on Big. Oh, and the bomb is going to be planted for Draken. Smuya not being aggressive and dropping down. Perhaps doesn't want to make noise. Is kind of giving up his position. Draken should be able to get this. Going to find the first. Peek out for the second. He spots him to the smoke. He misses the shot. And he takes his time on that one. 11 to 2. And again, JW putting his stamp on this game. With a great flank around, controlling the middle of the map. And Draken to close it out. Hop is back in Smoothie's hands. They've got M4s as well, and they've got plenty of utility. This time they do have a kit as well on Tizzy, and they have one. And he was almost the hero of this round. A nice headshot onto Flusha, a cleanup kill onto Crims, but Draken able to hold the line, keep him pinned down when he swings for another fight. Fast play. Potentially a Fnatic being slowed by the flashes and utility put down. Crims can't go bounding out, neither can Draken. So aggression play on Ivy this time from Big, so maybe trying something a little bit newer, but. Oh, JW, he's the one on the other side. He gets down one, he sprays the wall. Tizian's already so low, 32 HP. It's a double. Can someone please stop him? Someone. That, Slow I mean, him down. You can't even fault Big for that kind of a play. They're just saying, all right, well, let's just get aggressive on Ivy. Let's try and deny any kind of freedom that JW will have to make a play. And he still is able to handle that. He saw the indication it was coming, plays it passively, and then chooses his time to hunt down the kills. Two for him. <laughs> of course, he's going to swing out for more. Crouch slides into a headshot. JW is untouchable in this game. <laughs> he even gets a fourth. Bow to your god. <laughs> he is something of a nightmare currently for Big, and there's no getting past it. Um, going in towards the half, you have been dominated. There's, there's no two ways to put it. How do you redeem it? I don't think you can. You've got to just accept your fate. Look at this. The first shot was so crisp, and even the tag on the second set him up so nicely. It was the way they were like, the initial nades didn't like work out, I guess, the way they wanted it, and they were just scared to like take the fight after that, and JW just feasting on it. 28 frags, 14 rounds in. That's two frags per round, Lauren. Good math. <sighs> kind of harsh to watch, isn't it? It's exciting. It is, uh, yeah, at least, at least we're getting a show, but right? You know, it's got like a couple when... knife kills, we've got some teabagging, and we've got someone who's going to get 30 kills and a half of Counter-Strike. But it's like when like a dad or like someone older <laughs> joins in on those like pickup games of basketball or something, and they just like trash the kids, and they have no, like, you're not enjoying this. I'm not going like to let you like enjoy They're like dunking it. over like the toddler or something. <laughs> it kind <laughs> of feels that like right now. It's a little bit cruel. And they are a good team. They've got this far. They've done OK, but. We'll see if they can maybe get a little bit more on the board here. It feels like they're trying to, but it's not going to be a simple task, especially with the scoreline, even if it's with three in their pocket or not going into the next half. It is going to be such an uphill struggle. And oh, yes! He's done it he again. He waited for it. He's done 20. it again. That is so awesome. And they're going to know Smoogie is down there as well. Flush is ready for it. <laughs> JW has done it one more time. A three on five and a knife kill to get the map control. Now he's pushing forward. They have exist to contend with. They're just going to attack him. But JW, he's denied 30 by Tafson, but it just doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, 1v3, Flusher. Just do it, go on. Make, make it worse for him. Just, just make it hurt. <laughs> on the bomb, spots out next. It's, uh, it's not going to happen. The defuse will come in, and we will be seeing at least one more on the board for Big, but um, that's not. That's not how you dreamed of this going, was it? No, and I mean, if you're big, you see some smiles on their face, and I guess, like, that's all you can really do is, like, you kind of have to, like, laugh it off in a way, don't you? We know all these players at this level, you can all have just one of those games, and at the moment, it's JW's, but he's really taking advantage of it, isn't he? He knows he's got the hot hand, and he's going for everything, and coming out on top the majority of the times, 29 frags in this first half of train on the more difficult side. Three knives as well to add into that. Not much time on the half there. They've uh, opted to go right back into this. 12 to 3, Fnatic, of course, with a substantial lead here. And all jokes aside, all, you know, JW being an animal aside, this is Fnatic looking like they're getting towards that stage. Tamsin, though, will overrun Draken, and there's life in them yet, but it feels like 
Such an uphill struggle for them to even get a foothold into this matchup. Slowed it down. Flush is going to back away. He has a chance. And everyone from Big spread across the map, trying to make sure they're not going to get punished by any kind of flanks. And you can see Exist going on an information play. Gobby's going to spot this one out. Got to be careful with that fight if you're Gobby. You want the information, but you don't want to die. Not even though he has a P250, not a necessarily easy fight to win. And Exist has a new angle on him, just pinning him down here. What's the rest of Big doing? They're not really moving anywhere. They're starting to adjust towards the inner bombs, but there's two players here. Crims is already inside behind the spindle. Flusha is far back on the hump. I think Big is going to end up making the right call here. Drop down ladder, a couple players ready in T mid. They're going to attack this outer bombsite. Exist, without some very nice shots, won't be able to stop this. No, Crims did go down to Smear on B. And they've second guessed themselves here a little bit. They've kind of hesitated a touch, but it might still work out well enough, actually. Yeah, Flush has gone out towards the outer side of things, and they will get a free bomb plant. I thought he was going to stick around for a second, at least have yeah. a chance to get a kill or two. You never know with oh, how it's Lucky. gone and how. You see that looking. There is a kit on Flusher. They can do this. A two on three. There's no Molotov for Big. They just have to straight up win these fights. Time is ticking away as Flusher moves up, and Gobby might be able to punish him on top. There's the P250. Gonna go for the double peak. Flusher can't land the shot. Dropping down, trying to avoid the danger from above. And Exist just can't get into it. Quick enough. That's a great spin, but too much to do now. Gobby, just let Tizian do the work. And that'll be the pistol for Big. Four to 12. I, I guess the one the one thing that maybe they can have in their maybe not in their favor, but I mean if Fnatic just feels so confident and kind of like takes their foot off the pedal, there'd be a way for Big to kind of uh I don't know, get something uh, got something started. Nah. <laughs> I'm doing my best here. Nah. It's twelve to four, Jason. JW's been knifing people. He's probably got more knife kills in one map than someone's had like entire kills of a game in this tournament thus far. I'm pretty certain of it. But uh <clears throat> beyond that big you know, it's it's a long road. It's not impossible, but when you look at everything um, together, that's what we've seen from Fnatic so far. Why not invest? Yeah. <laughs> just here with the CZ, gonna spot out some danger, gonna back away down to just below half health. Draken's gonna come over to help him out. They're about to pinch this outer bomb site. This Deagle can do some work. The flash is a little bit late, but thankfully Draken misses that first shot. The CZs can't get anything done. They do damage, but can't complete the kills. Crims has one low, and now they're starting to get into the action. And exists to salvage an AK-47, low HP, but big in some trouble. Yeah, big trouble at that. Flusher, especially in this spot, that's a denial of a plant, and the nade. Keeping him at bay. Got B trying to find a safe plant. He's depending on Next to try and support him somehow. Not gonna happen. It's a 1v3 for God B, and I don't see this one working out. Every angle seems to contain a threat. Every single way he steps, he had been caught, and Exist is the one to do it. They turn it on a dime, they invested in the round, and it works out well for them. Exist with the play, the CZ, it looked a bit shaky to start with. I didn't think he was going to succeed on that, and there he goes. He recovered the AK-47, got a couple of kills, but I mean, you have to say, in a three-on-three, in three, you can't let the bomb planter inside the site just kind of go down. No one was covering him. There's a couple low HP players. It's not easy. I think after this after this game, I think, or after this tournament, probably, probably Big is going to have to go back to train and just say, you know, we, we really need to discuss this outside bomb. Site. They've had a lot of struggles with it throughout this half in, in many different ways, and now on both sides of the map. Yeah, it's not been a pretty picture for them. Maybe it's just not in the wheelhouse. I don't, again, we haven't seen it played much from it takes them. It takes time to get, to get uh, deep into the pool. It's one of the more tricky maps. That's it. It does look as though Fnatic have uh, done their work, to say the very least. As uh, this round, big looking for a plant at, uh, at best. You've got two P250s. Nothing else, no utility to play with. It'll be Flusher and JW watching out towards B, and he's got the knife out again. Jason, I'm scared. I'm excited. <laughs> Flusher waiting for the explosion. Spots the heads through the smoke. JW, he's got one. That's his first kill of the second half. He's up to 30 now. Gonna add another one onto it, but his teammate Crims is here to help him out as they come through the smoke and out of JW's vision. 14 to 4. and big buying whatever they can. Trying to make the investment, the Galils are out, the full utility, as much as they can bear, is their next buying whatever he can muster together, and on the other side, Fnatic have it all, pretty much, here at this point. Uh, Galils still on drag, not fully going all in, but they're fine. They are absolutely 
well set in that regard. No orbs to be seen, but that could be something we could get treated to do down the line if it goes that far. It may not make it to that degree, and seeing Tabson with some early presence towards the B side of this map, but the beast from below, JW, still waiting. And uh, back of your minds, where is he going to be now? Oh, Molotov extinguished. I wanted that to prevent his fallback. It might not have mattered as Draken is holding on top of the train. There's J-Dubs coming back in. He's got two kills, doubled up on Tapson and Tizzy, and, and Kreb is still far back. JW takes the bite out of the hit, and the rest of his teammates are there to clean up. Well done, Smoothie, the last one left, one versus four, trying to tap away and exist, but he's just going to hide and let Draken take the fight. 15 to 4 and big. They're getting swept out of this this series. They're not going to be eliminated. That's nope. that's the good news. But the better news is that Fnatic go forward. And if they keep this form, it is a fun Fnatic to be watching. This is the Fnatic somewhat of yesteryear, or at least to the aspect of JW bringing out that sort of performance, which is incredibly exciting and always so fun to watch. But it's 15 to 4. And Fnatic's down on the verge of securing placement toward that stadium. And on the other side, stopping them would only be MAC-10, CZ. Bit of utility here and there, and existed the helm, gets down Tizzy, and the follow-up could be there, but no, Tapson keeps this at an even keel. Not for now, Crims denies it. The quickening of pace is merely met with smiles from Fnatic. They love a bit of this. Bring it on. I think Crims was meant to be helping out Exist, but there was pressure from T-Mid, so he couldn't commit. He had to keep his eye on that lane, and he did take one out in doing so. And Big is just cordoned off in Ivy. Smoke in their face. Jackson hiding in the corner. Doesn't want to go on the reload. Bomb is all the way towards T-Mid as well, so if they decide to attack and aggress towards Ivy, they've got a long route to run. Molotov towards Crims, and he's going to slide out, just get some spam at the angle, not committing to the fight. He's luring Drake in with the AWP. They're not paying attention behind, and there's the final kill. What a game from Fnatic, and what a game from JW. Has to be one of the most impressive 15-round performances we've seen. 29 kills in the first half, three knife kills as well, and he was just embarrassing big. That is a Fnatic that uh, can, can certainly scare you. I think that's something we can take home from this, is that that looks a little worrying. Big. Gave it a good go on map one, map two it fell a little flat, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot to be said by the analysis desk. I'm sure they can break that down for us in just a moment's time. Thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah, we are just, we are right now rifling through JW stats, trying to get, make a sense of it all, because he had close to, I think we were, we nearly saw the 30 bomb in one half, stolen away from him by Tamsin CZ. And yes, Big, it's not the way they wanted to be finishing today off, but it's not, uh, the adventure isn't over for them. The German side, of course, looking to get in front of the home crowd, will be in the lower bracket, and their job doesn't get any easier. In fact, if anything, they're going to have to work even harder in the next best of three. I'm joined by Wine K and Thorin to round this day out and to explain, or rather just perhaps just sit here and, uh, and show some admiration, because that was just disrespectful, oh, yeah. old school, just badass, cocky counter-strike from JW and Co. Yeah, and the thing is, he didn't break the record for most kills in a half. But if you consider it, this was T side of train. He had eight multi-kill rounds, six zero in opening duels, 29, 29 kills. Yeah, finished with 150 ADR the whole map. Really? It's probably <laughs> one of the most dominant ones at least we've seen, or one of the most impactful ones, right? So, I mean, at one point in round 12, JW had 22 kills, Draken had one. And that one was an anti-eco kill with MAC-10 in round three. He literally before. had to do nothing as the primary opera on train. He had, he did nothing. He did some damage, granted, probably yeah. threw a few nades. JW was just doing almost everything. You have to give props, though, to Flasha and Crims because everything started from that pistol round. Mm. And they were 2v5, it, it became a 2v3 real fast, but they played it so smart. They just freeze, they just froze at the start. Big started moving around. They weren't sure, are they going to go back to B? Are they regrouping? What's going on? And then they had great timings to peak in the end. They played very well off of each other. Yes, Flasha had some good shots with the Deagle, but still, I think that's what set the tone, really, for both teams. And perhaps a, a difficult conversation to have, or an unnecessary conversation, but JW got four, if not five, knife kills in that game. That well, we, yeah. I, count, I counted three. I assumed there'd be more. Oh, no, just, just, just the three we saw. So? Okay, gets three knife kills in a, in a upper bracket game for a spot in the playoffs, hundreds of thousands on the line. You're being paid sure. a salary. You could just shoot him in the head. 
What do we reckon? You know, is this just is this just part of his play style, or, or, or do we accept it, or, or do we sit there one and go? Of them, one of them was on an IE court. That's fine. One okay. of them was in a small. That can also be fine. You know, you don't want really to give away a position. Almost. One of them was just just for the banter. And <laughs> plus, if you look at this particular game, like I know, obviously on Twitter, he's been bantering with people a little bit. He just looked like he had unreal confidence in this game. Like the amount of aim duels he actively took. He was even taking aim duels with like long range oppers. Uh, obviously, the, one of the reasons why Tabson was never in this game is because he was playing near the alley. So he was getting his head banged off every single round. And the sheer amount of times that JW got behind people was ridiculous. And the banger himself, a guy who's been behind big and is now going to be in front of the camera. We do have JW standing by with Trace. Fanatic have done it. They have made Big look just a little bit foolish. And this man right here was actually putting the pain down. JW, you had a hell of a series. I believe you were boistering some 132 ADR across both maps. How you feeling, man? Because what did you eat for breakfast? I think everybody is inclined to know. Uh, yeah, I had a good breakfast, obviously. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm feeling good. Um, I'm not the opera anymore, as people probably know. And I feel like... When we took Drake in, I, I think like a huge pressure got uh, lifted off my shoulders because uh, I have been a main opera for this team for for many years. Even though in some some uh, times I haven't really been wanting to do it, so yeah, I feel like a huge pressure is falling off, and and I think it's a really really good thing for me in my career as well to get a much needed break from from being an opera. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good and I think Draken is fitting really well into the team, so yeah. Might as well go with what works. And of course, JW, you're a legend in your own, uh, and I, I have to ask, you know, change of pace for you personally, you say you go to a rifle now. It's kind of a weight off your shoulders like you're saying, but going forward, I mean, we look at you guys on training, you just look so comfortable. You look so amped and everybody, everybody's flowing properly. Talk to me about the team vibe. Uh, the team vibe is really, really good. Um, we haven't had that much of a practice, so I think we can be even better, or I know we can be even better, uh, obviously. But yeah, I don't know. I think it was a huge mistake, actually, for, for NIP to let Draken go. So I think we took advantage of that, and yeah, it's really, really good for us. It looks like it's paid off the dividends on your side. Now, you just put on a stellar performance on train. You, you pretty much put a clinic, <laughs> clinic on Big Clan. Uh, Navi's getting a little rowdy over there. I want to ask you, though, because now you go up against FaZe, uh, and this potentially has a lot bigger of a hit. Uh, so talk to me about what you think of that matchup. Uh, I think it's going to be a good uh, and fun matchup. I think both teams are going to play very loose uh, because that, that's both styles, but also both teams are through now. So I think we're not maybe we're maybe not gonna see that much of a tactical play. So yeah, I, I mean I'm just glad that we made it to Lanxis again because I missed it last year um, and two years before that I lifted a trophy. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a good game and uh, a lot of headshots. A lot of headshots and a wild ride. One thing that JW can guarantee, especially if you see him in the train yard this day and age. Either way, that does it for me down here on the floor. Thank you, JW. I will be seeing you around. Back to you in the studio, Alex. Thanks very much, Trace. Yes, JW's there, uh, looking like he's uh, revitalized, getting just putting the rifle in his hands and doesn't have to worry about picking up that scoped big green gun unless he wants to. I mean, yes. I, it did show in his game style. I mean, I, he had almost the same amount of ADR of three of Big's players. He was doing the same amount of damage per round than three members of his opponent. That's also why I actually don't know how much you can take from the train game here, because actually, like, I don't even still know what Fnatic's T side's like, because JW just walked out, got a bunch of kills, got behind people. The comms and big seemed to be pretty bad. Like, they never really knew where he was. Yeah. So it was just such an overwhelming performance. It's one of those rare ones where like, one guy really did just win the whole game. And as, as we were saying about Drake, and it's, I mean, not that really he played terribly, he was never in a situation to get a kill. Do you provide some insight, Yenko, as to how JW was doing it? I don't know if you can catch, we didn't necessarily follow him throughout the entire round. I mean, it was a combination of just good play, good game sense, hitting good timings and hitting some insane shots. You look at the reset round, it was 3-0 Fnatic, 3-1. He walks out of, he goes out of Ivy, players on the train, he doesn't really spot him at first, but as soon as he takes damage, he flicks and instantly headshots yep. him. Like, he, the, he should die there, not nine times yes. out of ten, like... Ten. <laughs> you know, ten out of ten almost, right? But that's an insane shot and that breaks the map, map open because it completely ruins the setup 
for big, if when that player dies in a 1v1, it's the same as if your pit player on Inferno dies from the one guy in apps. Like that, that just yes. can't happen because it breaks the whole defense apart. And unfortunately, it was the reset round from big. And after that, you know, Fnatic is just riding the, that wave of confidence and they're going for some cheeky plays, you know, and, and when you have so much room to work with, so much room for mistakes, that's when this is obviously a one of a kind situation, but th that's the scenario in which it happens. There's two players from Fnatic now who have had legendary performances on train. You have Flusher and Katowice, of course, big game for him. This one still gets them to the upper bracket. No small game for sure. And that's another team locked in with the bracket. Like, why don't we take a look at them? Duncan, you can take us a walk through oh, yeah. Group A and we can kind of quickly summarize exactly what we've witnessed so far. Yeah, so the obviously this is the upper bracket, which we mainly saw play out yesterday. We saw all these matches as they were. Astralis doing very well, G2 surprise run. Then in the lower bracket, the main story obviously is Ents. They've taken care of a bunch of legendary players in NIP. Then they've come into some of the new school top teams and now Sports with Snacks taking care of them 2-0. Then on the other side of the equation, Na'Vi, shocking that they're in the lower bracket immediately, but they did lose that best of one to G2. They took care of Gambit. That was fairly easy, actually. Took care of Cloud9 at this point. Well, at least I'm going to go ahead and say that they will. I saw that game. They were pretty far ahead, I think. 12-11 on, on map so, two. Oh, maybe, maybe we can go to three maps there, but it's looking as though Na'Vi's probably going to join Ents. And so then we have a match you never really thought you'd see at this point in the tournament, but potentially Na'Vi versus Ents or Cloud9 versus Ents. Either way, not really exactly who we thought would be battling for hey, the Lanxess. I really hope we're covering whichever team meets Ents, because I haven't got to see them here on the mainstream, and I think that their story is a very exciting one, especially should they put up a fight, Yanko, against any of those guys. Group B, though, for you, and why don't you remind us a little bit about how this group does look and how it indeed played out. It looks like we're starting with the lower bracket. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you see guys like Renegades, how they made it through. They just lost that close game uh, against MIBR, then they beat Boot 2 0. So, not really a big challenge for them. But now, Big comes to their bracket, and that should be an even game. I, I feel like no clear favorite to me. Maybe you're leaning towards Renegades because they've been together for a bit longer and had some deep runs uh, recently. And on the other side, it's where it gets much more interesting. We see North. Uh, already knocking out Team Liquid after Big sent them to the lower bracket. And tomorrow, MIBR North, you know, it's going to be an interesting matchup. North on the upwards trend, they're gaining confidence and everything. And MIBR did look a bit flat, albeit against FaZe. You know, FaZe played oh. really well in that series. So that's going to be the first game of the day tomorrow that we're going to have on the mainstream. So that's going to be super Oof. interesting to yeah. watch. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but this, as I look at it and with what you're saying, there could be a world where North make it to the I main that, stage. I think that might be ripe for the taking right now. And North is not playing like world beat counter strike, but they're playing solid actually. And, and actually, their map pool's no joke. Whereas MIBR, they've got a lot of problems. I could, I could see the upset on the cards. It's not impossible for, yeah. for sure, but that's the thing. Whenever you feel like MIBR is ripe for the taking, that's when they suddenly elevate their game and you know take care of business and get to at least that playoff stage and for North it's usually been the opposite sure. so that's going to be an interesting storyline coming into tomorrow can North finally break that pattern that they've been having recently and can MIBR yet again step up when it matters. Yeah, MIBR taking care of business and I'm going to do exactly the same now for the end of the show. The schedule for tomorrow. You heard Yanko talk about what the first game will be and we've just touched on it. Of course, North versus MIBR. And the other two are as yet undecided, I guess. Uh, I think it's because we want to work out how the, uh, how the bracket plays out first. Well, usually it goes with the qualifying games, right? Mm. But the second game is Astralis G2 and Ants versus the winner of Navi Cloud 9. So you kind of want to see Astralis G2, but they're both in the playoffs already. Yes. And we haven't seen Ants. So I think we might go up with Ants, whoever they're playing. And the third one is going to be the last game of Group B, which is going to be winner of MIBR slash North versus the winner of Big Renegades. So that makes sense. And that is why I'm glad I have him on desks because that's never coming out of my <laughs> mouth. Uh, fantastic stuff from Mianko, Duncan, and myself. We will say goodbye. We will leave you with the DHL moments that delivered today. And when we come back tomorrow, we'll get all more Counter-Strike for ESL1.